In this video, we're going to look at a mechanical model for the behavior of bulk electrons in a wire. This bed of nails represents the inside of the wire. Think of each nail as a positive nucleus inside the metal lattice. Right now, our wire is topographically flat. The whole wire is on the same bleacher. What happens if we put some electrons in this wire? They just sit there. To be clear, there should be the same number of balls and nails, but that would be annoying. Anyway. Let's make things more exciting. We can use this book to raise one side of the wire up. The two ends of the wire are now on different bleachers. There is voltage between the two sides. We could also point out that the slope of the board represents the electric field in the wire. Let's use this stick as a capacitor plate. We can pump some electrons out of this plate. These electrons don't want to be on the high bleacher. They want to go to the bottom bleacher. Let's let them do it. Here we go again. This time we're going to have a higher voltage across the wire and a steeper electric field. This time the balls travel much more quickly. When we roll a ball down a ramp, we expect the potential energy at the top to be equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. Does that happen in this system? No way. Where does the missing energy go? Although the balls want to accelerate down the ramp, they are constantly bumping into the nails, just as electrons in real wire would be bumping into atoms. This makes them back up before they can start accelerating down the ramp again. This graph shows the speed of an electron over time as it descends the ramp. Because of the electron's small mass, the acceleration will produce a very high speed, but since it's constantly hitting stuff and stopping, the average speed of the electron is actually quite small. Each time a ball hits a nail, the nail vibrates, and we hear a little tink, tink, tink. When the ball hits a nail hard, there's a louder tink. When an electron hits an atom, it vibrates and produces heat and light. The higher the voltage we use, the faster the balls travel, and the more heat and light we can produce. Here is a new version of my Drude model. As you can see, there are three different parallel ramps. Each section uses different size nails in a different lattice pattern. How do you think the marbles would interact with these different ramps? The average velocity of an electron as it travels down the length of a piece of wire is called the drift velocity. As the name implies, the electrons don't move very fast at all. In most metals, the drift velocity is around one millimeter per second. Here's a flashlight. Let's imagine that we can see inside the flashlight and watch the electrons that leave the bottom bleacher get pumped up to the top bleacher, go through the bulb, and then come back to the low bleacher. How long would such a trip take? If the flashlight is one foot long, then the loop of wire connecting everything would be about 60 centimeters long. An individual electron would take over 10 minutes to take a lap around the flashlight. 